Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today I'm going to be testing the latest NB Miner 40.1 with built in overclocking technology on all six LHR card models in Windows. And the most exciting part is, is now this built in overclocking feature is fully supported within NiceHash for NVIDIA cars. We've created a separate video about it. I'll be putting a link down below. Definitely check it out. I'll walk you through step by step how I do it. As well as today, we're going to be providing our best overclocks for our six cards. If you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button. Stick with me. Let's start testing LHR cards in NB Minor Windows. Let's get started. Now that MB Miner includes built-in overclocking, just like the T-Rex Miner does, we have a lot more tools available to us because when we start up a miner, whether it be from within NiceHash or even a Windows batch file, we can specify, hey, this is our power limit, this is our core clock offset, this is our memory clock offset. But now, without going to any third-party tools like MSI Afterburner, we can also say, this is our definitive locked core clock value. And using that value, especially for our LHR cards, they would normally, using a power limit, they would normally have a lot of fluctuation. But this gives a lot more stability and I feel we have a much more efficient mining experience as well as we get more consistent numbers that are reproducible. But it's not only LHR cards that benefit from this. Full hash rate cards do too. I find on my full hash rate cards, when I'm using locked core clock, I probably gain about a 10% efficiency overall. So this is some research of some numbers I found on the internet. Again, do your own research on this number, but this gives some guidance, I hope, to help you maybe in tuning your full hash rate cards and getting even improved efficiency on them as well. I have a dedicated test rig set up running all six LHR cards, ranging from the RTX 3060 V2 all the way through to a RTX 3080 Ti and every model in between. So we have every LHR card running. Please know though, this is a dedicated mining rig. I'm not using it to power the display or any of the hardware. So under my conditions, I'm gonna be able to get the optimum hash rate from my cards as well as get the optimum LHR value. If I was using this in a computer that is also sharing the graphic card to power my display, I will be getting lower results. So please keep that in mind. Let's move on to our tests. Looking at our first card, we're looking at a RTX 3060, a V2. I'm using a locked core clock of 1575, a memory clock of 1300. I have a fan set of 80, but notice also I specified an additional dash dash LHR reduced value of 0.2. So in the event that I was able to hit an LHR lock rather than going from 74 or whatever I started at down to 73 and a half because NB minor is set to move in 0.5 increments. It'll only move in 0.2. So this lets me get much finer, more granular results from my testing. And I find it's able to get me higher results. So with this card of using these overclocks of 1575 locked core and a memory clock offset of 1300, I was able to get great results. 36.7 mega hash and 116 watts is showing at the miner. My overall efficiency is 0.316. So this is great results and I'm able to achieve this very stable and consistent. For my next card, I'm gonna be testing a RTX 3060 Ti. This is my Zotac card with Hynix memory, which caused additional challenges because I can't overclock the memory very high, otherwise the card crashes. But I'm using a locked core clock of 1380, a memory clock of plus 1025, and my mining results for this card were great. I'm getting results of 43.9 mega hash with a watch shown in the miner of 126 with a 0.348 is my efficiency. The next card I'm testing is a RTX 3070. It's the most efficient LHR card in my opinion. And for this card, I'm using a locked core clock of 1065 and a memory clock of 1250. And I found by doing that, I was able to have very stable and consistent results. My card was not running too hot in general. And my mining results for this card were 45.3 mega hash and 103 watts was my average shown in the miner with a 0.440 is my efficiency. So this card is extremely efficient in my opinion. The next card I test is a RTX 3070 Ti. This is my founder's edition card. And this LHR card was giving me really great results. It's using a locked core clock of 975, a memory clock of plus 1300. By doing that, I was able to get 
58.3 mega hash, very consistent. At 167 watts is my average shown in the minor with a 0.349 efficiency. So overall, I think these are pretty good numbers and it's very, very close to what I was getting last time with NB minor 39.7. The next card I'm testing is a RTX 3080. This is the EVGA and it's an LHR card. I'm using a lock core clock of 1455, a memory clock offset of plus 1600. Now I know 1600 sounds high and it is. However, I have a temperature so I can see the thermals for this card, even in the minor right now, it's running a memory temperature that is only 82 degrees Celsius. So I may have a little bit more room to go higher, but I'm happy to run it at this between low to mid eighties for this card. And it seems to be running great. My final mining results for this card are 75.5 mega hash, 233 watts is showing on the minor and I'm having a 0.324 as my efficiency. The last card I'm going to be testing is the RTX 3080 Ti. This is my EVGA for the Win 3 card and this is a great card and it seems to have really good cooling as well. Currently using locked core clock of 1455 and a memory clock offset of plus 1300 and overall I'm getting really great results. I'm getting consistent of 89.1 mega hash with 264 watts shown in the minor and an overall efficiency of 0.338. Overall, I'm really happy that I was getting very, very stable and consistent numbers using NB minor 40.1, but it is fantastic being able to push these overclocks right into the minor now. And I can use this functionality, whether I'm starting a minor from a bash file or even as part of nice hash, I can pass it right into the custom algorithm settings. If you need help and guidance on that, we have a separate video on that, as well as I'll be putting a link down below. If I want to look at my final mining results of NB minor version 40.1 versus 39.7, I have very, very consistent reproducible results between the two miners. There's a very slight difference. I would say the advantage would be in 40.1 with a slight improvement overall on the hash rate as well as the efficiency. But it's great being able to finally pass in these overclocks directly to the miner, just like we could all along with T-Rex miner. Speaking of T-Rex miner, how does this stand up against T-Rex miner? Well, let's take a look at the final results and 40.1 still has slightly lower hash rate and efficiency. T-Rex still has the edge on that, but MB miner has a big advantage in that I can run it native within nice hash. So both miners are still great and I like using both of them. My preference still lies with T-Rex miner. However, when it comes to tools like nice hash, being able to finally specify that overclock setting right inside the miner is a huge advantage for me, especially if I want to even be setting it for multiple algorithms. Like I want to independently set overclocks for Ravencoin or Conflux versus Ethereum. I can do that independently now that I have the ability within NB miner to pass in those overclocks and nice hash has added the support for it. I really enjoyed making this video and sharing my journey with you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, like, smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. We welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Happy mining!